Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another SLG Meetup. Now, if you want to know what it takes to build some of the most incredible contemporary homes, not just in the UK, but around the world, stay tuned because we're going to have with us our next guest, who is a famous architect from London. His name is Gregory Phillips. He's also an SLG member and he's been doing some extraordinary work when it comes to the portfolio of homes that he's built and designed around the world. So stay tuned and enjoy the conversation. Hey. There he is. What's Great. going on, Gregory? How are you? I'm good. Great to be with you again. Yes, of course. It's always lovely to see you. How have you been? How are things in London? As cold. I gotta say, I gotta be in that Miami heat. It's cold here. <laughs> well, you can always come to Miami. It's always I'm fun here. But really? definitely, yeah, exactly. Well, well, listen, that's one of the things that you do through your job, right? You don't only just design properties and build homes in the UK, you do it internationally. And in fact, you have a few nice projects going on. But tell everybody a little bit about yourself, because I know that for those that are not too familiar with your work, beyond being so nice, I want you to, to tell a little bit about okay. it. Okay, so I've, I've had an office for over 25 years based in London. And the, so, so in the year 2000, about the year 2000, I realized that I really love doing houses more than any other kind of project, which, so for, I know in, in different parts in the US, it's usual for architectural practices to specialize in just one kind of project, like doing a house, you know, doing houses for people, but that's not that usual in the UK to specialize in the niche of new houses, mm -hmm. um, or, or even just to do house extensions and refurbishments at a sort of decent sized scale. Normally offices, when they can, when they build up the skill set to do multi-million multi -million pound or multi-million dollar projects, they tend to do other kinds of work as well. So a bit of offices, a bit of retail, um, hotel work. So I, I did all of those early on in my career and then really realized that my passion is houses. So. And it started about because I did a project in Mayfair for a very lovely client who um, asked me to sort out his historic building and make a contemporary interior within the fabric of the old building, bring, putting all the new technology in, lovely finishes, um, and getting all, everything to happen. Yeah, the permits, the, uh, the process, the contractor, project managing it. So I did all that, and I thought, this is great, because I got to speak to this uh, very well-informed, very knowledgeable client, um, got the project to happen. He was delighted, he looked great. So this is, I thought this is, this is my passion and this is a process where I can take on that role of really looking after my clients from beginning to end. And, and then you, you, know, you get to see what you put all these hours and hours and years of work into. So uh, as things progressed, you know, my office continued doing that kind of project. And there was a period in London where we did a lot of adding to buildings and a lot of refurbishing and adding basements, adding space wherever mm -hmm. we could, but at a pretty high level of finish. Like I would say there was a certain point when London, the quality of what we were doing here, uh, obviously I'm biased, but I think it was like top of the world. We were just really, the craftsmanship here was fantastic. There was a lot of money here. London was very vibrant for, very, for a period where everything seemed perfect, yeah. you know, in our own uh. bubble. Um, the, the people were coming from every country in the world to have a base in London. It, it was just a really exciting time, I'd say, in those kind of early 2000s, that period. Um, so then for us, although that ebbed and flowed, you know, with different financial situations around the world, we kept on doing what we did. We also started, we got a commission um, in about 2006, I'd say, to do a house in the countryside. And we did it in a very contemporary way and really created a, what I call a contemporary luxury country house, which was unusual in the UK. So to do something that was out and out contemporary <clears throat> with the advantages that you could bring by doing that, like you could enjoy looking at the weather you can enjoy opening up the glass and getting that inside outdoor flow, which you do so well because you've got such great weather in you know, Miami or Los Angeles. <laughs> but we actually get 
really good weather in parts of the year. And then we've got weather that's really great to look at. So like right now, it's cold, but it's really nice looking from the inside where you're warm to the outside where it might look pretty, but it's cold to be in. So big sheets of glass and um, a kind of contemporary design lets you take advantage of all the land you've got and you know everything there is around. So that's what we did. Well, let me just digest a little bit of everything that you mentioned. Yeah. It's a fascinating story. And I think that a lot of people that are listening or that will be watching this later, there is a couple of fundamental things to, to get from what you just mentioned, right? So it's important to start with a passion. That's something that you start by developing this passion through curiosity. You were curious about something, you start developing that passion, and that's what led to eventually doing the things that you're doing. Now that led to then later on, to be a little bit more innovative and disruptive by finding a specific niche. So always looking for a unique niche where you can just build upon and believe in it. It's not gonna be easy, but then eventually you'll get that, that leap of faith that will take you forward in whatever project it is. So that's what you did with the luxury yeah. contemporary homes. Yeah. And then later on, as you keep on progressing and staying consistent, you'll start developing more opportunities with that compound effect, which might lead you to expand. And when you expand, some people, what happens when they're either afraid to expand or they're expanding quickly and then they go down again is because they have not established themselves in a position of success. And that position of success is not just building yourself as an individual or your team, but as building those strategic partners and having the opportunity to have the right local partners everywhere that you have those business opportunities is key. So here in Miami, for sure, that's how we connected, right? To be doing those yeah. things together. So yeah. one thing I wanted to mention, right, because you've been doing, you mentioned in Jeddah, in, in Saudi Arabia, you've been doing also in LA, you've been doing in so many other different locations around the world. And your style is very unique, very distinctive. And that's how you became so successful and got all these awards. But what is something that you're seeing more and more common as you're doing these projects? I've been, I've been finding towards the excess and the larger and the bigger and the better, as a normal trend, but I've now found this other trend of people who want to find their own way of doing a house and they haven't got these huge, huge budgets. So it's kind of interesting having both things going on. No, absolutely. And you got to adapt. Now there's one thing that comes through my mind, right? Like it's always about how can you stay ahead of the curve? Because you were disrupting in an industry that was very saturated and you decided to go with that concept that you were doing in London and take it to the countryside. And yeah. that became your, your stamp. But how do you stay relevant and disruptive? Or do you just keep on that same line? So I, yeah, so I've kept on the line. So I gotta say, I, I think when I started, I, it wasn't a good business model in that, like you've got to find the people, you got to find the clients who want what you do. So, like the obvious thing in, for most people would say is you work out what the people want and then you give it to them. Whereas I just worked out what I wanted to give them and then try to find them. So I, so my method was a, was a terrible business plan really. Um, but that's why, but I, so I think the world is more, I think me and the world are coming more aligned now. So like over time we've come closer together, which is great. That's and fine. I think, I think the only thing where I've taken the more sensible approach, is trying to look where else in the world could I have the kind of clients that want a house like the one I want to give them. So because I think they're in other, I think they're all over the place. There's I think there's a number in the UK, but they're all over the place. And I think there's a lot of them in Miami. There's a lot of them in the States generally. Um, so this is a great way for me to put that message out there in the world. You know, if you live anywhere where you think I'd love to build a new house, and I don't want to just go with the local normal, like everybody else has got, we can give you that. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, I love that. So <laughs> with everything that is going on in London, right? Because there's a lot of different things and a lot of people, as you mentioned, it's not perceiving London as it was in maybe early 2000, but there is still some magical thing happening in London. London is London and the UK in general has amazing spots. So there is real estate coming in and out all the time. But for you specifically, as you're mentioning that you have this clientele everywhere, where do you see most of the demand coming from outside from the UK? 
So I yeah, so it's places where you can build and but there's enough of a, like an excitement to do something a bit different. So I do think North America is a great spot. I think um I, I, look, I think we could build anywhere. I, I the client just has to have the mental like um decision they have to make the, the mindset decision that they're going to find someone locally who will deliver the project for them that they're going to trust to deliver it but they might not be the greatest designer or they might not be the designer for them so they're going to have to put the two of us together and once we do that we're very happy to talk to people we're very good at talking and all of that um, so that's the only thing it takes is that mindset if you were looking for a one-stop shop it's never going to be an out of town designer yeah. I mean, Oh. It's, it's just not the right way to do it because you don't want it's a it's not a good call to put all your to have all the um to basically not to use local knowledge when there's no local knowledge is required but that shouldn't limit you is my position is like you should use local knowledge for what it is needed for you you were saying something very interesting which is at the time of expanding at the time of really wanting to take your business internationally it's important to look at commonalities so that you will have a path of least resistance and you mentioned things as whether the culture the language the the barrier on the on the different things that you can build upon that so that's important and when you build those sorts of partnership it's also very good to have specific selling point on why is it that they would like to work with somebody from outside yes yeah, yeah clear on that and build that message which is what you've been doing and promoting also on social media which is uh, another thing you mentioned that has been beneficial at the time of promoting your brand and yourself the internet was great because you could like now find new people that you didn't have to go out and find and so the networking thing is of course there's intermediaries who can connect you but again they don't it's not their world it's not it's not their business to find you jobs like if they're i mean it might be but in the main they're looking after whatever their job is and they might something might come along on the side but it's not their primary thing in life very few people yeah. some suffer some but very few no so, you're right then you, you you nailed it right there you said the barriers have been taken down and you now have direct access to whoever you're trying to reach and that's something very powerful now you need to be consistent like anything in life you cannot just post one thing and expect that right. it's going to bring you the world you need to keep on doing it and putting your brand right up front on exactly what you want to represent it so i agree with you and you've been doing a good job with that so also the collaborations the same way that you want to start expanding your partnerships it all starts by starting doing those collaborations and putting your yeah. name attached to some other people and brands so now i think that this is also good the way that you're doing it but of course, like you that are so involved with building these extraordinary homes and we call it the luxury contemporary, right? So I, I'm always curious about what luxury means for, for our guests. So what is it for you? Uh, so I, look, I think, I think a house is almost like the ultimate luxury good in that, in the, like you genuinely live in it, right? So, so I think having experience experiences of uh you know a journey through the house and when you get to the room that the room is all the things you want it to be or have you know and um then there's like the facilities within it i mean your house can be it, it should be like more comfortable than any hotel you'd ever think of staying in you know your hotel should be really like a um, and I'm not talking about it has to be large, but it just it just should have all the things that you, you'd want in a in a in a stay that might be for a week. You're going to stay in this place for years, so you should really put, invest in it because you're investing in yourself. 100%. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> and look, I mean, you you've been doing some extraordinary projects. I can't wait to see you here in Miami. I think that we have a couple of things pending which I, I want to get offline to tell you about. But definitely appreciate your time here today. If you're getting too cold in London, you know, just one plane away yeah, from Miami. Yeah, I think I should, book my, I should book that flight. There you go. <laughs> you should, my friend. Anyways, I wanted to appreciate you for this. And for everybody watching or listening, please make sure to follow Gregory. 
he is going to be an inspiration for most of you with everything that he's been doing. Thank <laughs> you, Gregory. I appreciate you, and I look forward to seeing you very yeah. soon. Yeah, I'll see you soon.